When you think of ogres, you inevitably conjure images of giant, monstrous, thick-skulled brutes. But on Kryn, you'd be only thinking of a tiny fraction of what ogres truly are. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Irida Ogres. I'd like to take a moment and thank my collaborator patrons, the Heroes of the Lance, and invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel by visiting the links in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. This episode is primarily informed by the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition resource book, DLR 1 Otherlands, but extensive information is also pulled from the various Dungeons & Dragons edition campaign source books. In the Age of Dreams, the ogres believed they were the firstborn after dragons. They were tall, handsome, and strong. They were created by Tachesis as her favorite children and were seemingly immortal. The ogres were a proud race, with a dark grace and cold beauty, which was unsurpassed by anything else on Kryn. They were distrustful of others, so when they came across the graceful elves, brooding dwarves, and industrious humans, they met them with anger and then violence. Their hearts were cold and bent toward evil. They enslaved marins, or barbarian humans, and used them to build their mighty nation of Coldstone. Then Igraine came on the scene. Igraine was a governor in the northern lands of Calthraxian. In a mine collapse which he barely escaped, his daughter became trapped in, and his slave disobeyed his orders of evacuation in order to save Igraine's daughter. The slave was put into chains and taken to the royal manor for execution due to his disobedience. Igraine was supposed to slay the human, but instead he learned the concepts of compassion and free will from him, and would eventually flee the ogre nation. He was wiser than all, save the noble dragons, and taught the ogres another way of living. He taught that violence would inevitably lead to death or enslavement, and he would forge a different path, a path of peace and kindness. He rejected the inherent evil and violence within his race, and a clan of ogres chose to follow him. His new philosophy was inspired by humanity through the power of choice. Igraine chose to try and live in wisdom and faith in the freedom of choice. With the slave uprising due to Igraine's heresy, the ogre nation fell. The ogre race was split and the evil ones chose to war with Igraine's clan. Ultimately, the goddess Mishakal saw Igraine's plight and granted them the ability to shapeshift so they could exist in safety. Igraine's clan followed him to the sea where they sailed away in a great canoe through storm and struggle. In Igraine's absence, the ogres would degenerate over the centuries through their corruption. Some may see it as inevitable with Tachesis as their mother, but they would war with each other as much as with other races on Kryn. Igraine and his clan would finally arrive at a great island. Igraine passed his authority to his daughter and retired into the mountains. He returned to his people centuries later with his great book, the Arda Neath. He renamed his people the Irida, which means the Gentle Ones, and then he died. The Irida would live in peace for centuries. They were a magical race whose powers were fed by the Age of Dreams from which they emerged. They built their civilization in the glorious northern sea, free from the troubles of the world, and their island was named Anaiatha. The Arda Neath was never intended to be a sacred book, but rather a philosophical stepping-off point. Igraine refused to allow it to be copied in life, but anyone who wanted to read it simply had to travel to its location and do so. They could then interpret its passages as they saw fit, and then debate its meaning with others who have read its text. It was simply meant to be advice and opinions from a wise man rather than a set of commandments. The Arda Neoth's overarching theme is that the individual must be knowledgeable and full of love in order to become happy and prosperous. As the centuries passed, their pride in their way of life became a vice. It led to greater cities and an air of superiority over all other races. They stopped feeling as though they needed the gods, worshipping them out of tradition rather than honor. Then the cataclysm struck. For the Irida, the cataclysm wasn't a punishment, but rather a test. A test which they failed gloriously. 
A century before the Cataclysm, dark ogres began invading. Their race had become malevolent and wicked through the ages. The Irida defended themselves in accordance with the right of Igraine. The Irida warred with the dark ogres and felt that they did not need the gods' aid and eventually won. Their high king turned his back on their temple and proclaimed that the Irida no longer needed their gods at all. With a mighty boom of thunder... The island was torn apart, and a chasm formed beneath the High King's feet, swallowing him. The temple section on the island that held the Ardeneath broke away and was born into the depths of the sea with the truly faithful few. From that moment on, Anayatha was lost. The surviving Irida resumed war with the Dark Ogres, defeating them at great cost. Some Irida were taken away to Anslon or Atalidas as slaves. They strayed so far from Igraine's teachings, they actually renamed themselves the Mishta. They still hold the beauty and dignity of the Irida, but with a profound sense of sadness. They then renamed their island from Anayatha to Selassia, or Place of Sundering. During the High Sanction, the Mishta can hear the call of Anayatha and long to return to it, but the High King declared they could never return unless Anayatha came to them. Until then, they would never be whole. The island of Selassia is part of a coral reef chain of islands called the Spine of Talidas. It's located between Talidas and the undersea kingdoms of the Dargonesty Sea Elves. The Spine of Talidas is populated not only by the Mishta, but the remnants of the dark ogres called the Inzunta. The Inzunta look nearly identical to the Irida, but slightly more sinister in dress and tone. Both the Mishta and the Inzunta live with corrupted forms of their ogre lineage due to the Greystone. The Inzunta have enslaved the Orugi. These ogres have stringy golden hair, oily gray skin, and webbed hands and feet. They worship Zeboim and build elaborate shrines in her honor near the water's edge. They resemble cylindrical towers of stone and can be seen for miles. They are more like the corrupted ogres on Anselon than their Irida ancestors. The Mishta share much of their society with their neighbors, the Bolandi, another corrupted offshoot of the ogres. The Bolandi are smaller humanoids with brown skin, hair, and eyes. They're slim and dwell in the trees of the jungle islands. They're a mischievous race, always trying to perfect the practical joke. Their culture was ravaged with the Nzunta and their Arugi slaves. The Mishta aided them in their time of need, and they've remained friendly ever since. Most of the world has forgotten about the Irida, even their progeny, but they are not lost to history. In fact, they still dwell on the portion of the island of Anayatha that was moved by the gods. The faithful of the Irida's offspring can still hear the call to return home, and some actually find it. At times, even non-Irida can find it, as was the case with Draconians sent by Tachesis herself, who invaded the island and brought many true Irida back to Ancelon as slaves. Their location was revealed to Tachesis by the Cataclysm and the splitting of Anayatha. The queen had been much aggrieved by the loss of the Irida in the beginning of the world. The Irida who dwell on Anayatha are deeply religious, spending much of their time in prayer for the return of the Mishta, who they fear are in danger. The Irida are powerful magicians who have cloaked their island from discovery. Prior to the Second Cataclysm, they sent out emissaries to the world using their shape-shifting ability to hide their true presence. All but a handful of the Arida were destroyed by chaos at the end of the Fourth Age. And that is all I can fit into this episode. Was there anything I left out that you'd like to hear more about? Did you think there are too many offshoot races from the original ogres? And lastly, are you aware of the Spelljammer connection to the Inzunta? <laughs> Leave a comment below. I'd like to once again invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel, and you can pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link, all of which are in the description below. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching, this has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember... Did you hear what that man called me, Usha? Little thief! How dare he? And he took my knife! Only... It wasn't my knife. It was your knife, I noticed, Palin. And now that thief's missing his knife, too. I've got it right here. Funny, he must have dropped it.